Are you ready for our next adventure? Let's head over to Furniture Fairy Falls in Fitchapelago and see where the fairies are sprinkling their magic this week. Tales of the Furniture Fairies Fairy Flight Adventures Part 1 Choo Choo Chattanooga Be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Joshua 1 9. Chapter 3 Moby Fitch The Tale of the Great Great Couch. In our last episode, Woo! We've managed to fix a lot of things today! Ruby said as she wiped the sweat on her forehead. We're just warming up, Bloom said with a giggle. We are? The two asked in unison, looking shocked. Yes, we are, Bloom said. And with a wink and a nod and a wish-wash whoosh, the trio were magically transported to the living room where a large gray couch could be seen. Wowza, this is huge! Ruby squealed, assessing the couch. It's been a huge challenge, too, Zack said disappointedly. I noticed it was sagging a bit while we were fixing the doors, so I thought we should work on it next, Bloom mentioned. Yes, the couch, well... Friends come over every Sunday and... Well, perhaps we get a bit too rowdy and, uh... You can see what happened. Zack explained, looking a bit embarrassed. I have been wanting to fix it, but every time I look at it, I get overwhelmed. It's as big as a whale, and I just don't know where to start. It's become my nemesis, like Moby. Zack's voice trailed off as Ruby squealed. Moby Fitch, the tale of the great, great couch! And they all laughed. <laughs> Only in this tale, we will prevail, Bloom cheered. It's time to tackle Moby Fitch. This truly was a whale of a project. There were boards that were pulled out from staples, twists, turns, splits, cracks, completely broken off boards. There were um, cracks you can see in the wood. Getting those springs off was a challenge, which we'll get to in a little bit. You can see the pressure I'm putting here is showing that that board has completely slipped off and is no longer actually uh, connected to the framework. And here you can see things have been pulled apart and twisted. There is There was just an incredible amount of work here, and it was actually a lot of fun once I figured out what I was doing. And I will try and link the video below that I got some of the information from but the starting point is always of course tipping it over and removing that dust cover from the bottom so you can see it, you know get inside there and see what was happening I had pulled part of it off until at this point now removing those staples and getting in there and really assessing where like you can see there that it, the board is cracked it's cracked again there and I start marking them uh, you know which then that's actually blood so I had blood sweat and tears actually into this project after removing the entire dust cover, we can see there's a couple nicks and dings in the fabric itself, which we actually don't go into in this video, but I can share some things in a future video. But I wanted you to see the couch from all the angles. Assessing your situation and then marking those boards, identifying what you need so you can get the right lumber and get the pieces uh, is a critical part of what's going on here. Removing all the staples is important because under the dust cover is an additional layer of staples connecting the fabric that must be removed in order to expose the areas which need repair. Now you can see the boards we've marked with X's are the ones that need to be replaced including their dimensions so we can get the right lumber. This is a key place right here where the springs are attached and you can see how warped and damaged that board is. Then I needed to make sure I took pictures and start numbering them so I knew I could get everything back in the right order when I was finished. I marked things with numbers and then BR for brace. Again, this was new territory to me, so it was really important that I identified where each item went and which things needed to be replaced so I was sure not to miss any areas that had been previously damaged. You can see there's cracks in those boards. Again, that's, that's where the X's come in to make sure I know they need to be replaced. 
sometimes we'll see areas that are catching that or they're sagging and I have to investigate further to find out where the, the damage is, what was the problem with it. You can see nails being pulled out there and those springs we used a special tool and you can see the snap action that goes right there and how fast those things snap up so it's very important that you keep your uh, face and head away from there. This cat's paw, or pry bar, whatever you want to call it, is made easy work of removing those nails and separating those boards. Here you can see I've removed the main brace, and now it's time to cut some boards. Now, since the couch is the same length, most of the boards were the same length, so I put them together, marked them off, used some painter's tape, and then used my square in order to make a straight edge for the circular saw. Now these are the clips that hold in the springs that continue to support the couch. You can see the wood has cracked under the weight and the friction of people jumping, moving, uh, plopping on couches. But these are very sturdy clips and I'm going to show you how you can actually extract them fix them and use them again. We ended up using these and you'll see this is a very strong metal. You need to use your best judgment of course if they're split, if they can't be put back in and they won't hold the spring then you'll need to replace them. But the they are actually very sturdy. So in a minute I'm going to be showing Zach how to do it but right now I'm showing you how to pull these nails out of the boards. I wanted to line them up and you can see how bowed that board is. When I cut my new board I wanted to attach them, make sure they were the exact same length and make some markers on there of where those clips lined up because you do need them straight across from the existing ones. Now I got into some extra detail here about where the clips were actually attached just making Making sure that I got them in correctly uh, when I was putting them in. I disregarded some of those, but I did use those guidelines of exactly where the clips were to make sure that I lined them up on um, the new piece of wood that was going in. Here I'm showing Zach how to actually bend the clips back straight and in a minute when he tries to hammer them in, you'll see how incredibly strong and hard they are. Uh, it is important that you get those two teeth going straight in so they will actually dig into the wood and support you uh, pulling that spring and the tension that's going to be on that spring afterwards. Then it was time to assess the rest of the loose boards inside. I put a clamp on lengthwise and added an additional board for support there and started reattaching loose boards with screws and in some cases I actually needed a bracket just to give it additional support. After installing the brace I made sure there were screws about every 8 inches connecting the existing brace with the new support piece of wood. Then reconnected or reattached any loose or completely free boards to make sure we had a sturdy fit. After installing the board with the new spring clips, I then had to make sure it was secure and then go and use the oscillating tool to create new braces for the sides to make sure that it stayed that way even under pressure. The next part was the hardest part. That was reattaching the springs to the clips and it required a special tool that I wasn't able to video. Then I had to get the hammer in here and re-secure those clips to hold the springs tight and that was a challenge as well. After hammering these clips in, I noticed the gap between this backer board and here showing that this board is either cracked, which I have, can't see any signs of it cracked, or it is just under a lot of stress. So it's better over here. So I started by drilling a hole and putting a screw right there. And I'm gonna do that every probably eight inches and see if that will shore it up.
After getting the screws in, I needed to go through and sand it to make sure there was nothing in there to catch on the dust cover. Next, it was time to clean up, get all of the additional sawdust from drilling and sanding out of there, then realign the batting to make sure that we could then put over the fabric and have it still line up and look like the original couch. Now here I'm stapling that batting in, then I'll be attaching the fabric back over it paying careful attention to make sure things line back up so it looks like it did in the first place. It's easy when you're stapling to end up with bumps or bulges, which you'll see in a minute uh, when I'm doing the bottom side, it looks like there's some, but I was very careful to make sure those were taken out. Now these are upholstery tacks that are in the side. They're quite hard, so you can tap them down, and then I was able to actually tap them back into the original hole. Now here is where the dust cover on the bottom looks like it's bumpy, but you'll see when I reattach the feet that everything is straight and in alignment. And with that, Moby Fitch is finished. Great job, team! Bloom commended her friends. Yay! We prevailed over Moby Fitch! Ruby said excitedly. That was amazing! Zack said, impressed. To think, I was so intimidated by it, but together we can tackle anything. He said with a big smile before he glanced toward the vacant wall. Hmm, is it just me or does that wall look blank? Zack asked. They all laughed. <laughs> so with a wink and a nod and a wish-wash-whoosh... Tune in to the next episode to find out what new tales the fairies have to tell. Follow us for more adventures on our social channels at Furniture Fairy HQ. And help support the You Are Enough Global Initiative by checking out our Amazon store and the links below. Until next time, remember, you are enough just the way you are. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so you won't miss any future fairy adventures.